uh, chapters, and we are going to talk about semantic search, uh, synthesizing from a whole number of um, uh, reading items that I have given you. And uh, Cersei and Michael are going to discuss that. I'll, I'll step in as I as needed. So, um, like Dr. Schott said, this is a special topic on semantic search. So, my name is Michael Bowman. Myself and Sarah C are going to do a special topic today on semantic search um, for the CS. to know why semantic search is so exciting and, uh, and why we're doing the things and the companies are doing the things they're doing to understand sort of where we came from. So I'll be doing that and then we'll eventually get to the semantic search technologies and then the future of search. Um, so what we've done is taken a lot of the articles Dr. Sheff has been putting out and sort of worked them into a timeline and um, we're going to go over it that way. So sort of before the no web, right? There was just a, there was the internet and a lot of disconnected machines and different technologies. Um, and sort of this Archie was the first, um, generally considered the first search engine. And so um, this was written by Alan M. Taj and um, McGill University in Montreal, Canada. And so he had a script that would run once a month, right? And would go out to all of his known FTP servers and get a listing, directory listing, save the URL, save the title, the files that are in it, and then just put it out into a text file that you could then use grep on to, to find the files you were looking for. And this was huge, right, because with the internet, things were shareable, but they weren't really discoverable up to this point. And so this was sort of first, first search, first way to discover content. Um, okay, so soon after that, Tim Berners-Lee invented the, the Wide Web um, and put out the first website. So we've talked about this before, um, but here's sort of the first website he put up there. Um, it was just a website explaining what the web was, um, how to get a web browser on your machine, how to use it, and how to set up a web server of your own. Um, and then the next year he wrote the first directory, right? And this is where we're starting to get into search now because he's starting to organize the content that's out there on the web into um, directories, into categories. So uh, so somebody not technical could go through here and just click on links and figure out um, the, the data they wanted to get. This was at the virtual library. Um, so if you want to learn more about the early web and sort of his first couple slides he did, he wrote a, a memoir of the, like the early days of um, setting up those those sites and getting things kick-started. Um, so chapter 13 of this has an uh, extensive discussion on metadata and uh, uh, the first use of words in my Okay. Um, so after that, um, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but it's important to know um, sort of um, how things sort of evolved into the search we have today. So at first, they start off with the vlib.org site, and it was a directory. And in 1994, the web was exploding with more and more websites, more and more users, and um, the people started coming up with the directories. That was their first sort of intuition of how to organize the web and how to make content discoverable. Um, so, um, and sort of the whole idea of these bot-fed indexes and search hadn't really been, um, came up with yet. But I wanted to, um, you know, and we know now because we're sitting here that, you know, eventually these won out. That's how Google works. That's how um, Scene works, um, Bing, all these things. But um, back then, you know, they uh, there was a, the information.
information retrieval, I guess, wasn't as good as it is now. And so um, there was a definite utility to having sort of a uh, somebody come in and organize the data for you that you could click through and see. Um, so 1993, we had the first um, sort of web crawler, the spiders and bots were being written. Um, this was written by, um, by Matthew Gray um, from MIT. And so he had a Perl script that would run around um, following links and it would record the URL of the website and the title of the website. And um, the funny thing is this was sort of uh, an early example of a distributed service attack because it was, his script ran loose and actually um, brought down some of these web servers because it was indexing them hundreds of times a day. And I think that even, you know, sort of um, like we were discussing before, like uh, the whole, um, you know, search bots and indexes versus directories um, sort of painted the bots in a bad light there to begin with. Um, and the first uh, index here he called the Landex. And so an interesting aside too, this guy actually um, went on to, he works at Google So 1994, the web crawler came out, and um, this was notable because um, this was the first um, um, sort of bot fed search engine that um, indexed the entire text on a page. So up until now, they were just indexing metadata, titles, things like that, URLs, and these guys were the first ones to take the entire content of the page and build an index out of that. And this is happening right at 1994, so around this time is when the sort of the internet boom hit had a lot of companies coming online, building their own search engines, and a lot of users coming online too, um, and a lot of money being poured into the web and internet companies in general. So this is, uh, you know, Excite came online. Uh, the guys from Excite actually work at Google now too. Um, Lycos, um, Lycos was uh, the sort of the one that uh, I think it went to, I think it said 40 different countries all at once. It was the top internet destination in the world. Vista was um, uh, another big uh, entry. So their claim to fame was they had a multi-threaded um, uh, web crawler. So it could index the web faster and it could get a bigger index than all the competitors do. Um, yeah, and Alta Vista is actually owned by Yahoo now. Um, and so what happened on through there is, you know, 2000 hit, the internet bubble popped, and a lot of those companies got acquired and um, are now, you know, absorbed into other companies or just uh, bankrupt and folded altogether. So, um, so by this time, what's happening is, you know, the, the information on the web's exploding. You know, we have um, the open directory project in Yahoo, but they can't really um, manually index and categorize all these pages that are coming online. So the indexes and um, sort of the information retrieval or like today's search, what you think of as today's search is coming online. Um, and they used information retrieval techniques, which is, uh, you know, whole discipline in and of itself, and whole discipline. Um, but the first ones, the early ones just used Boolean systems, right? So you search for a term and it will tell you, you know, which documents contain this word. Um, you know, and it's either a yes or a no. There's no inherent ranking in a lot of the early ones uh, did like an inverse sort on time, so the newest stuff, latest, but that's, you know, as we know, not very helpful. And so then we had um, sort of ranking models come out. Um, and this was um, a Gerard Salton, um, was a big um, name in this space, and came up with the vector space model and sort of this uh, alternate additional thing called the term frequency inverse document frequency model that actually um, so what happens is you get two vectors you know vector of words in your query versus the vector of terms in, this, in the document and then you take the cosine of them and you see how how well they line up and then that gives you a, a ranking as to how well this document matches your search and so with this ranking that's you know infinitely better than
modern web. So we're all here now. We know that Google sort of um, became the dominant player in this in this market for search. Um, and their claim to fame was the page ring. Um, they came up with this in 1996. And actually, Stanford owns the patent on it. Um, Google uh, bought it from them um, for a lump sum of money. But their idea here was. Um, based on um, sort of a reputation as well as the as your um, the vector space model. So it takes this into account when it's uh, returning results. So you have more reputable sites and things that the more links you have pointing to your site, the more reputable you are and the higher in the page rank you'll get. Um, so from 1998 to 2000, Google um, you know, becomes a major search engine. Um, you also have problems popping up with Google bombs, so people sort of trying to manipulate the page rank algorithm to get their results at the top. Um, and becomes a verb. Um, so modern day competitors to Google, um, Bing and Baidu, you know, Bing's. Also during this time, you know, in sort of the modern era, you have sort of the verticals. So new search, um, medical jobs. So like, you know, if you think about it, monster.com is just a big search engine uh, tailored for jobs. Um, and then also, you know, Facebook and Amazon and Apple. Uh, we'll talk more about those guys later. Um, you know, Google wasn't just sitting on their butts either. They've come up with um, um, some updates to their main page rank algorithm. sort of help out with some of the spam sites they were getting into their index. So people that were trying to just sole purpose was sort of thin on content and they wanted to boost their ratings. The Penguin, uh, that update was um, more fighting the search engine optimization um, companies that were uh, you know, putting duplicate content out there trying to get to the, uh, to the top. And so also, you know, integrating in social, like Google Plus, you know, Bing's doing it with Facebook. Change from Excite and Lycos and Alta Vista to um, Google. What was the uh, main change? Exactly, did the page rank change? Like, uh, your search result will come first, like, if according to the number of search patterns. Like, page rank, like, uh, whenever any search happens, right, so the page rank will rank your pages accordingly, so according to the number of searches. That's good. Sorry. Yes. So, the number of pages that are the pages that link to you. The yeah. most one so the fundamental change here is that earlier search engines use the um, standard measure uh, of 
TFIDS kind of thing, which is a in, in whole information retrieval kind of measure. Uh, so suppose you are searching for a car or automobile, then uh, the page that has most occurrence of that word would come up highest, which of course is not necessarily the best page, page right? It's not just the latest page, it's not just the most authoritative page. People started putting multiple, you know, if they wanted to come high on some word, they started putting many occurrences of that. Then they started putting that in the meta tag. So in, in, in the ways that it will not be visible to the human, so that it does not look bad. But uh, for, a, uh, for the caller and, you know, the indexer, we'll find many occurrences that are not vis visible. And because there is, term frequency as a part of the formula that will come up the highest, right? Um, so with one switch, <coughs> you know, this page rank really brought in credibility as is uh, available by others, right? Typically, hey, you are good because others think you are good. That's the fundamental uh, aspect of it. You also point out a very, very, very important and critical thing, uh, the user interface single Google box thing was the uh, fundamental, uh, you know, was very dis you know, important in those days. Um, the search engines were all coming up with more and more powerful uh, advanced search capability. Can you do Boolean thing? Can you do possibly your negation? Things of that nature, whole variety of, uh, uh, you know, ways, maybe by the day, by the author, all the variety of things. Instead, they, these guys found out, you know, and made the right call. Um, and in fact, if I remember correctly, the current uh, CEO of Yahoo had something to do with, you know, the interfaces there. So, uh, creating a very simple use box that, that a, a interface that everybody in the world would find it useful. Because ultimately, the search is not for the geeks and computer scientists; it's for everyone else in the world. That played a very important role. So um, I remember that in 1998, they were probably in their uh, peak. I started my company in 1999, uh, and they were still uh, big enough, but, uh, um, um, and in 2000, uh, April, the internal bubble burst, meaning NASDAQ started going down. And then soon after that, I, XI became, uh, uh, you know, I guess I, I had closed down or so, sold out for cheap or something. Lycos also lost a lot of, uh, repeatedly lost the customers, Altavista lost customers and so on and so forth. Um, uh, and um, Yahoo and then Demos, they were the, you know, uh, but the directed structure. I remember one important uh, statistics, why I was trying to, s I met a CEO, uh, a CTO of Yahoo uh, to try and sell my companies, you know, say, hey, use my, uh, you know, my semantic search, you know, because I, I can do better search than you guys can. That's the, that's the but um, they had, of course, been directed. And I remember that they had um, uh, 9,000 people employed, I think I said that before, to keep their directory <coughs> up to date. With the average person cataloging 50 new pages per day. That was what I learned. I, I, this may not be 100% correct, but this is what I, somebody really authoritative told me. It so happened that the company that acquired my company, my customer in uh, 2002 was the first interim CEO of Yahoo, Peter Monaco. Before the permanent CEO's hire, uh, Philip Monaco was the first interim CEO of Yahoo. So, uh, connections and other things. Uh, so, but the point is that um, then search engine like uh, Google and others came about and said, well, we can do all this automatically, we much cheaper. And the growth was so, Fast that humans could not catalog it entirely manually. And then the dynamic pages came and other things that I discussed earlier in the class. I meant to go over that a little bit more, but it wasn't like a like a like a quick turnover between, you know, because even in the screenshot I had up there of Yahoo, they had a search bar and the directory. So there were still a lot of people that, that thought that having a curated directory structure was better than search. It was it was it was uh, uh, better and, and it did some uh, uh, even today it would survey. In fact, I remember that some of the search engines would um, 
mine or analyze um, uh, the directory structure because that was created by human to get uh, you know domain specific or uh, contextual information like word frequency. A particular word appear in particular context, you know, and you can compute the statistics and frequency of that, and then say, hey, uh, the word is more selective versus more general. So suppose you wanted to use in your search statistics uh, and give priority to let's say selective word versus a general general word, then um, you would uh, you know uh, uh, you could you could mine this kind of human created data, right? And um, also um, in those days, suppose there are uh, my research lab was one of the labs uh, that did work on workflow management, and suppose there are. 10 different, uh, 10 major labs in the world in workflow management. So Yahoo would have, uh, you know, uh, it would be better of proud, pride for, you know, your lab to be listed in uh, that because out of whatever, 100, they will find, you know, what they think is somebody thinks to be uh, important ones, they would, they would catalog them within a particular category, right? Um, and um, uh, it would still be an easier find. Uh, you like your, if you know what you're looking for, for example, you're looking for research and workflow and not commercial company and workflow. Then going the right, uh, you, know, the, you know, tracing the right data structure to go to the labs or the companies that work on, you know, doing research and workflow, it was much easier to go there in then uh, to do search because the search was still um, um, not optimized enough. Uh, how would you tell the search engine that I'm interested in workflow but uh, only in the research topics, not in the uh, commercial topic. Because if you say workflow research, it's also possible that a company says, based on many years of research, we have this product. So what research is that, right? So that it, it is not that easy. Now, of course, there are ways to deal with these kind of issues also, but uh, uh, the early search engines were not able to make many of those distinctions. Right now, the statistics are much more complicated than TFID. Absolutely, absolutely, good point. So, I mean, there is only limited human capability to create a data structure. First of all, you remember I mentioned uh, the name of the first ontology set, Yahoo? What is the name? Srinija was her name, right? And um, uh, so, you know, the first, uh, I guess, uh, job, uh, you know, title as an ontology, so I, as far as I know, was that. And so she was, kind of ultimately responsible initially, and then it was too large, maybe there are a lot of people then, but she was responsible for determining the structure itself. Somebody makes a structure, right? Then the most did it by community engagement, right? And um, uh, how it is always hard, particularly at the next level and third and fourth level, whether it should be this way or that way, whether you should make a new category or just stick it into something that is already there. So there are many, many challenges. So, so, so let me tell you the classic example I uh, used to go to this company and say why what I can do, you guys can't, and so you should, you know, like, you know, have a, as, as a deal with me or something, right? Uh, one was Palm. You type in Palm in a search engine, Google. In any of the search engines we had those days, and um, how do you, uh, you know, distinguish between Palm, uh, as in Palm of your hand, Palm operating system? There was a company that had a Palm operating system. Palm uh, a, a product uh, they had a PDA, a personal digital assistant. Before the smartphones came, there was a PDA, right? That you keep the contacts and other things like that. And um, uh, how do you distinguish between that? How do you distinguish, you know? Uh, distinguish semantics between all the different paths, right? And most search engines did not have the ability to uh, make those distinctions, right? And, and how do you know that there are different categories within, these are all the things about Palm OS and uh, these are, and know the fact that Palm OS is associated with Palm PDA. Now these relationships, associations, are not, uh, would typically not be there in syntactic processing, 
of anything, right? There needs some schema, some knowledge structure, some ontology, some world model, whatever you, you call it then, to be able to make that distinction, right? So if you have saying that you have uh, palm um, as in um, a type of oil, palm oil, your palm is in part of human anatomy, your palm is in technology, within the technology. So because um, if you have the knowledge structure, you are, you also know not you not only know that this is palm PDA and palm OS, but that it is part of technology aspects, and through the technology aspect is uh, uh, related to all the, and maybe it is all the PDS and all the technology aspects. That that kind of hierarchy is there. That kind of you know model is there, right? That was not there, uh, you know. And we were as far as I know, we were the first commercial uh, organization company to ever de do that. So the other very um, uh, uh, I think a popular uh, uh, search term for me was Tiger Woods. Um, um, and in fact, this, this is very good, uh, by the way, because um, when you did Tiger Woods, uh, 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 Tiger Wood, you would also get Tiger, and you also get Wood, and you also get Tiger in the Wood. And this was a fact, this is how it was in those days, right? The notion, because, because uh, P, uh, the indexers were indexing individual terms. Eventually, they start indexing phrases or nouns, you know, or, or something along that line. But earlier, it was single words, and you had to say tiger plus wood, or in quotes tiger woods, to get tiger wood as in a person. Right? Otherwise, such thing would not know. But most people ask a person of the road to say, hey, you should put quotes or you should put plus sign, and you know, they won't do that, right? In our case, we would have the notion of a person. And we would have a notion of, if you have an ontology, golf, player, Tiger Wood. So then, the notion of Tiger Wood, Tiger Wood is a golf player, he has played at all these tournaments, he has won these tournaments, all these things were there. And we would be able to understand and catalog and identify and make meaningful. Right? So, um, in there are number of the, the reason that we could not grow uh, is mostly to do with this um, you know uh, bubble burst because investors stop uh, investing in the um, search companies uh, uh, sorry in, in, in this kind of internet companies they could not make distinction between dot com versus search um, and for four years they did not believe that uh, Google will be successful and that uh, and they did not believe in the business model that Google had what was Google's business model. Advertisement, and nobody had no, you know, nobody, you know, none of those VCs were convinced that Google, uh, uh, you know, advertisement-based model be successful. Our model was advertisement, as was Google's. Thankfully, Google had uh, twenty-five million dollars from Sequoia and um, VCs, and uh, they had seven years to make start making money. And when they show in two thousand, I think two, three, or four. Uh, you know, uh, uh, that indeed you can make money using advertisement, then people change their mind. But, you know, we, we, one should, you know, many of these VCs have hurt mentality. They, they are not necessarily able to say thing on their own. Uh, so uh, for companies like my company, which had only less than $3 million, we didn't have all that much time to succeed. Second thing is sometimes also the problem is you can be too early. You have to take one single step at a time. I was talking about ontology in 1999 and 2000. In fact, that word is there in the in the pattern that we got in 2000, you know, that we filed in 2000 and got in 2001. So uh, that's sometimes way way ahead of the time. And, and and the other thing is scale. That people could not believe that you can do semantic search on scale because. By that time, it was clear that Yahoo's model and manual cataloging, and any 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 search browsing, whatever you are doing, anything on the information, anything about information finding on the web, if it had a lot of humans, they did not, they, you know, they didn't think it would be successful. And they were right about Yahoo. Yahoo was giving up search and uh, sorry, uh, bra um, directory structure can't keep up with it and. Uh, you know, the search engines had uh, uh, started to place as the most important properties uh, and sites on the web. So um, uh, um, 
they could not believe that you can create knowledge base in largely automated way. <coughs> so when I say that in my company, I had only two people employees uh, for doing knowledge management. I only had two employees. One of the guy was music major, had no computer, formal computer science background. And we had this widget, so you know, you know, you have protege kind of thing, right? But we had to train somebody like that uh, in creating the schema and you know model of the knowledge and then do some curation. But I only had two persons managing 25 different ontologies in the sports, entertainment, uh, you know, business, and news, and, and so on and so forth. And um, that is exactly the reason why, um, for example, uh, Peter Norwich said, uh, you know, if you've seen my blog, in 2000 and I think five, he said that uh, ontologies have no role in search. And then I responded, I, I disagree with him, right? And now we see on you know, the are doing ontologies, you know, the Google Knowledge Base is a form of knowledge. They, they're not using what semantics, you see. Now they're using it. When, by the way, first thing, um, uh, uh, first uh, announcement of Google Knowledge Graph came, they did not use the word semantics. Uh, they used the word link. They didn't even use the word, if I remember correctly, they didn't even use the word relationship. Although uh, Amit Singhal now talks extensively about relationship, and rightly so. And they, of course, understand these things, right? But uh, they did not believe in RDF, uh, and they may still not believe in RDF, and there may be reason for that. Uh, anyway, so we'll, we'll talk more about it after you guys. Yeah. So I also started with the example that pointed out about the palm search and we can see how different search engines uh, come up with uh, somewhat sim uh, different results for the same term. So in addition to that, uh, from the audience, so do you experience that the Google or the kind of search engine that we have, we are not satisfied with it? So do you have any example by your personal search experience on the web? Yes. Um, I would start something at the beginning of last week find it again. I searched the exact same thing at the end of this week and I did, couldn't find it. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's different. That's my design. Yeah, that's, that's different for what you want to find. Oh, really? Wait, please explain. Uh, uh, so, the reputation, right? It grows, if you, if you look at uh, the English dictionary, the way words are used, very few words are used a lot of times. And even in search, it is kind of similar. So, uh, for example, uh, uh, if you search cricket, uh, you will uh, normally get the phone thing here, right? But uh, I'm not, that is that is a little bit up to what's personalization. But if you search the coding stuff, whatever we do, it's very unlikely you will find the same thing. Gotcha. So, in the general stuff will be more easier to find. Anybody else? Yeah, I continue for the moment. So. The basic idea of the semantic search that we are having is we try to make the search a little bit more meaningful in the way that we can. So, um, so can you go to, to previous slide? Yeah. Yes. So here, suppose you have a semantic search engine which actually understands that uh, okay, you are uh, what palm actually means. So, in reality, palm means plenty of things. So if you have that semantic search engine, you need to come up with every possible kind of result what a user might be looking for. That way your user interface would have, I don't know, some 10, 15 kind of uh, result sets, different result sets. Some cases, yes. So yeah, so as a user, I mean, I, I don't like that, uh, I guess some um, 10, 15 kinds of different things when I'm looking for one particular thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I think that the the big question would be how are we going to design the the user interface for the semantic search and things? I mean, I Google know. What Google know? So it depends on your context. So yeah, if, yeah, if it's one o'clock in the, the afternoon and you type something, it'll try no, to give you I mean, your. Yeah, code. I mean, like uh, for that, right? In Google, when you say some uh, ambiguous word, it will suggest you, do you mean that or do you mean no, that? It does not necessarily give you all the results. It's trying to give, give, give the next feedback from you, where you want to go. 
palm may appear in different levels in the hierarchy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, typically, though, what, what you'll see is that, think about this having a, 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 a taxonomy, right? And then you'll see the predominance of the word appear in certain levels, at different levels. So it doesn't matter whether it is all at the leaf level or some intermediate level. What is important typically is to know, oh, you know the context is technology, you know the context is um, uh, location, as in palm stream, the context is something else. So that typically, and that thing is the typically, is, is it typically, yeah, typically you are trying to just, uh, you know, uh, much of the distribution can be done by, uh, you know, going to the high enough level. Uh, you really, um, uh, location, technology, uh, you know, uh, sports, these are all good enough levels to, uh, you know, get much better results so without that, it. That good enough levels is a, a separate knowledge that you have, right? And you, you try to model in that way. Possibly. I don't, you know, I, I wouldn't profess to have the perfect answer for your question, though, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you wanted, like, the hand of Fisher Paul, why don't you say hand Paul? I mean, why don't, you, why don't you try and make your search smarter? That's so what you rely on. on. Yeah, like, <laughs> so you're yeah. relying so, tell you what so, you're so, so, you know, here's the interesting thing. Um, most people, if they pay any attention, would know that they get, they get much better answer if they actually uh, spend a moment thinking about the search query and give search a good search query. I, whether being a computer scientist or a current user and all that, I always felt that I was very good at getting the answer from Google by just picking the right term on what I wanted. Um, and I was willing to use, um, instead of one word, two, instead of two, three words and such. Well, uh, I don't know, my statistics probably is totally outdated, but I think the average was probably two point three words or something. Um, but people, uh, average person, loads, just doesn't like giving, uh, thinking at all. They prefer sifting through the answer rather than they spend time upfront to give a good search query. This is the human psychology, right? And so the search engine had to adapt and deal with that rather than what would have been a good, uh, you know, way uh, for people to get answered. So that, that is the reason. That is the reason you know, the categories and facets didn't work in search engines. That is why Google still stays with the search box yeah. rather than putting categories. interview Google's CTO said that uh, if people are s looking for some information and they don't know how to look for that information, it's not their problem, it's our problem. That's how the, that's what Google, that's how the Google approach the problem. So. How does the solution apply? It's a relevant feedback. I don't know. I'm totally inactive writing search queries. So I take my best guess and type something in and then look at the results and more like this, links all the way down for just for, um, if I'm trying to find some sort of problem um, that I'm, uh, I'm getting an error message while doing something and I'm trying to look up, okay, how do I fix this? Well, I might get, this is the definition of that exception, you know, here's the page on that, you can download the code for the exception or um, from one source and I can see more like that or um, this person also ran into this error, but it was in a totally, it was on a different operating system in a different context, I could see more like that, or, I mean, stuff like that. And so I, I can really just browse through. So you do like a shotgun approach, just bam, just blast the core down there and see what you get? No, I mean, like, I think yeah, you like do the best different. you can, but the search engine can only do so much with the information you give. Yeah. So um, part of it is this whole idea of relevant feedback, where the user can say, okay, well, this is, what I'm really asking about, and then once you've identified what context you're trying to search, then the search engine is able to produce that with more relevant results. You can kind of narrow it down that way by giving the, that feedback. I mean, um, so uh, one of the reasons that uh, Amit uh, Singer is, I think, the vice president of Google. So he pointed He's out. He's the guy who did the Google News, by the way. So he pointed out, yes, we have certain problems, but at the same time, now the user's expectations are getting higher compared to the early ages. People are smart enough to find the information and they want uh, the correct information in, in one
whatever the way they want. So he said that uh, it is also becoming a very prominent factor for the for their uh, emergence to be somatic surgeon. And also he thinks that now the surge is kind of a, like a trusted um, companion that always uh, go with the person. So when we go to the shopping probably it might be on the car that we check the opening hours of the shop. Maybe we, we are getting the address over there. So now a person would think that the search is always there with us and because of that they think that they need to they need to be able to give more and more meaningful results and meaningful uh, meaningful uh, mechanics to uh, come up with the better queries and the give the better results. So that is something they are also looking but we know it's uh, it's not that easy. Even if two p people are communicating, sometimes the thing that I'm saying might not get I mean, it, it, the misunderstanding of the people communicate. So it is there even between the people. So the problem becomes challenging because now we should be able to understand it for machine, it for search engine. So that's why this problem becoming harder and harder. So now let's uh, try to categorize. What do we really expect by a semantic search? So the things that I pointed right now, I obtained from the uh, from the two links that I have given below, and I added something by myself as well. So, but this might not be the, the correct list. You also can join, and maybe we can uh, talk about those things as well. So, uh, for the first one, they said that it is the entity search or the concept search. I mean, when we are searching for a film, we are not only looking for the uh, documents that have film as the keyword, but we want the film. I mean, even if it has the movie, that's fine with me. So I'm looking for the concept. I'm not looking for the keyword anymore. And also providing the relevant uh, related details. So when I'm looking for, a, for an example, a book, I might be interested of the other books written by the same author. So my search space now is bigger that I would like to go and explore the search. And I think there is a separate type of search, what we call the exploratory search, that uh, people do that. So we, we, we search for one thing and we explore and uh, go to some, 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 some very different area. And then of course the question answering, so now it's becoming a very hot topic in the uh, search area, like what are the 10 largest lakes in California? I don't think even now and also the generalized and specialized queries. So the example uh, one of the authors uh, giving this article is, okay, I'm looking for article on health. So it might be possible that I'm also interested in articles on diabetics as well, because it, it, it is important for my health. So, so this is like the generalization and, or the specialization of the terms that I'm looking for. somehow without knowing that is location but the fact that there is one cluster of terms which is palm spring other cluster of things which is uh, all variety of oils coconut oil and palm oil and all they come close 
close to uh, you know palm oil. So that would be just using the statistical information that they are different. First is to know that these things are different. There are multiple uses of word palm or film or whatever. And they are in different contexts and the contexts are simply recognized by cluster or some other statistical processing of the thing. The second is when you say formal or specific where you actually have named it that this is a domain of technology, this is a domain of um, you know, uh, 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 this is the domain of uh, food. And based on that, you know, uh, and then you start becoming either formal or more, you know, definitive kind of stuff. So, uh, even in the first case, system can give you uh, a pseudo behavior that it is understanding you to some level. Right? So it will not be, it will not seem to be completely dumb because it has started to make distinction that there are these words palm oil and in this thing contain, you know, occurs in the context of other word. So what frequency, whether they've done, you know, uh, uh, Markov related analysis of the uh, co-occurring words and so on and so forth. And um, uh, it'll start saying, oh, I, uh, because your human mind uh, see, uh, appreciates that the computer, you know, the search engine understood the contextually relevant other terms it will appear that the engine is somewhat smart, right? Even though it may not have exactly labeled the data. The moment you start labeling it, saying this is technology now, you have come to next level. It is our understanding that, uh, it is my understanding that, um, you know, most search engines only focus on the first, they were very, um, they, they, they were trying to avoid until recently, trying to do explicit labeling of the things because it is not clear people agree on that or not agree on that. The moment you start doing agreement, you recommend ontological commitments and those kind of stuff. Uh, who who do you rely on that? You know, whether you need persons to agree on that and they were trying to avoid that. Now they figured out that you can use large um, uh, sets of databases, uh, you know. So this started with three ways and now they're extending in a very large way. Uh, but. Uh, found that that human created thing was enough to make a difference. So I think we can take a break here and continue the next question.